Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video we're gonna restore, upgrade and back in function this Dell Precision M6600. A while ago I bought some laptops that are mostly for parts and for some of my upcoming projects. In that pile I got this Dell M6600. This laptop was sold to me like maybe working, but a seller wasn't really sure about it. Also many things here are missing. So the seller has no mad of taking this laptop to the repair store and he offers to me a fair price of 50 euros, which is okay to take a risk. So I bought this laptop in a verge condition, without a charger, without some parts, like without RAM, without disk and with a broken display. Also the laptop is a little bit dusty from the inside and I notice a corrosion to the heatsink and some metal parts, which means this laptop was used in a high humidity conditions. So at first I thought I will use some parts from it, like the keyboard, the case, some other parts and etc. But because this is a still good laptop, I've decided to give it a shot. So first I start with checking the laptop. Because there is no RAM, I place one RAM and now for testing. And when I try to connect the charger, I saw that something is wrong here. The charger simply won't enter to the charging port. When I take a closer look, I found a stuck metal pin in the middle. The Dell chargers have a small tiny pin inside and that pin actually was left over from the old charger. Fortunately, the pin was at the beginning and using tweezers and needles somehow I was able to remove it without causing some bigger damage to the charging port. Actually, I scratched the port a little bit but no problems at all. After I take out the stuck metal pin from the charging port, I plug my test charger, I press the power button, the laptop started but nothing happens. Just a black screen and shortly after the laptop is shutting down automatically. So I took my tools and I start with disassembling because I need to take a look from the inside and find the source of the problem. Well, when I took out the palm rest, I saw the other RAM isn't here, but the GPU is here, the other parts are here, the motherboard at the first look fine, but also I found that the CPU isn't here. When I took the CPU heatsink, I found a thin sponge. And the question is, why somebody will use that? So someone placed the sponge to protect the CPU socket. And when I saw this, I got hope that the motherboard is good. Otherwise, if the motherboard was really bad, nobody will care about the CPU socket. Now I took an Intel Celeron CPU, which I use for testing only. I placed the CPU in the socket, then I mount the cooling and I try to start the laptop. At first, the laptop shows a black screen again, but after a couple of attempts, finally I got something. But because the screen was broken, to continue with testing I need to connect the laptop to my desktop monitor and then I cross over a basic testing process. Because I wanna be sure that this laptop is working before I continue with other things. When I check the laptop and when I saw that the laptop basically is ok, I continue with disassembling. Because I need to check the other parts and because of the cleaning.
Well, after I finish with disassembling, I start with cleaning and checking the electronics from the inside, like the motherboard, the GPU and anything other. And first I start by cleaning the motherboard. And to clean the motherboard I used a soft brushes, cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. Well, the motherboard is clean and now I move to the GPU. When I'm on the GPU I wanna say a few words. The GPU chip is covered with a very dry thermal paste. And to remove the thermal paste I used a plastic sputter stick and brush. But later I used cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. Also if you're going to clean some GPU be very careful. Because on the GPU chip are very tiny components that are covered with a dry thermal paste. And also these components are very hard to spot. So this process needs to be done with a very high precaution and very carefully. Because if you damage some of these components then the entire GPU may become useless. Well, I'm done with the GPU and everything looks fine. Now I move to cleaning the keyboard. Here first I start with checking the keyboard from the desk because to remove some dirt that is under the keys and which is harder to reach with a brush or some other tool. And after as always I start with cleaning each key separately using cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. And later I clean the keyboard using brushes. Well, the keyboard looks better and now I move to cleaning the palm rest. In general, the palm rest is clean, but again, using brushes and 96% isopropyl alcohol, I clean the palm rest in detail and as well the other cables and buttons. Now I move to the heatsink and the cooling fans. So here, first I start with basic cleaning of the heatsink. I mean, I start with removing the old thermal pads and the old and dry thermal paste. However, later I will wash the heatsink and make in-depth cleaning. Because the dirt in the cooling fans is stick to the blades, I mean it's like concrete. To one of the fans I had to remove the top metal cover. After I took out the cover, first I cross over a dry cleaning process. And later, literally, I washed the both cooling fans using a 96% isopropyl alcohol. After I finished with cleaning the boat cooling fans, I moved to washing the heatsink. I washed the heatsink because there is a lot of dust that is stick to the inside and warm water and soap are the only way to completely remove anything from the inside and made the heatsink to look like a brand new. And as well, I washed the rest of the case that is without electronics. But this process I have done it in a bathroom, under a sink. Meanwhile, I bought some upgrade parts including a new display. I mean, this is not a new display. This is a used display but in a working condition. However, these used displays mostly are coming dirty. So again, I cross over one more cleaning process. Well, after cleaning the displays look better. I spot a couple of scratches but the scratches are not really noticeable as nose to be. Also this is very usual and very expected with the used displays. Now before I move to assembling I took the top case because I need to fix the dents. On the top case are more dents but three of them are deep and very noticeable. So in this case fixing these dents is not hard at all and all that I'm going to use is 
one soft cleaning cloth, a piece of wood and one small lightweight hammer. The soft cloth is to prevent additional scratches or damage. The wood is soft and out and it won't cause additional dents. And I used a lightweight hammer because it's easier to control the impact force. This is a very simple process, it's nothing complicated, just it takes some time to be done. Personally, I need about 2 hours until I fix the dents. So after this process, the place where the dents were before is noticeable. I mean, they cannot be 100% removed, but the surface is completely smooth. But except the dents, on the same way, I had to fix the bottom display hinges. The boat hinges are a little bit loosey, and here, using a hammer, a little bit flatter the metal pin which is connecting the boat parts. And finally, everything is ready. And now I move to the assembling the laptop. Well, let's slow down and make the first upgrade. For this model, I bought the i7-2960XM. Actually, I was planning to use a different CPU, like i7-2630QM. But for the same price, of about 35 euros, I bought a 2960XM, which is a much better CPU and belongs to Extreme Edition CPUs. Well, now let's make the next change, and that is the RAM. On this laptop, I will install a 16GB of RAM in total. Actually, I was thinking to go with 32GB, but 32GB is too much, and also it's going to be just wasting of money and nothing else.
well and the last upgrade is 960GB SSD. Actually, this model has a space for one more disk. But 960GB is going to be an out for anything. However, later can be installed another SSD or hard disk. But for now, I will use this 960GB only. Well, the laptop is almost complete. And the last thing what I've done here is using a car polish wax a little bit shine up the entire case. Now, after polish and make the final cleaning, I moved to installing the windows. And as windows, I used Windows 10 Pro. I go with the Windows 10 Pro because this laptop has already connected a Windows license. But because this laptop isn't made to fully support the Windows 10, I had problems with the GPU drivers. Actually, I was not able to install the Nvidia and the Intel HD drivers. Or if I installed the both drivers, then the laptop start being very laggy. The laptop is so laggy that even I can't play videos and the gaming performance are totally down. And I found that the problem is coming from the latest Windows updates. Actually, some new updates are optimized for the newer hardware only, but not for some older hardware like this one. Now, to fix this problem, first I download the both drivers and I download the display driver uninstaller. But before I continue, I disconnect the laptop from the internet. Because if the laptop is connected to the internet, the Windows will start installing the drivers automatically. So in this case, I don't need the drivers from Windows. I need drivers that I download before. Also this process requests access in safe mode. Now, to access in safe mode, I press Windows and R in the same time to start the run and here I type msconfig. In the msconfig I select the boot tab and here I select save boot then apply and ok. So now after the restart the laptop will boot into the safe mode automatically. Well and this is the safe mode. In safe mode, I open the display driver uninstaller and I start with uninstalling the drivers from the both GPUs. But I uninstall the drivers one by one. I mean, I uninstall the Nvidia drivers, then I restart the laptop. After, I boot again into a safe mode and I uninstall the Intel HD drivers. Now, when I remove the boat drivers, first I disable boot into the safe mode. But I didn't restart the laptop, because I'm going to install the Intel HD driver. Actually, I installed the Intel HD drivers while the laptop was in the safe mode. After I installed the Intel HD driver, I restart the laptop and the laptop boot normally into Windows. Now in Windows, I continue with installing the Nvidia drivers. And finally, after installed the Nvidia drivers, everything started working normally and without any problem. And as final thing, I continue with activating the windows. 
In this case, I used a Windows 7 license key to activate the Windows stand. Actually, you can still use the Windows 7 license keys to activate the Windows stand. And this process takes just a couple of minutes. And after making all these changes, this is the final result. Well, now let's take a closer look at this laptop. This is another laptop, but it's still great for many things, like working or studying, also it's great for web browsing, watching movies and videos, and it's great for listening to music and almost all basic daily tasks. And also, this laptop is great for some games, I mean not some latest games, but for some great older games. And the first game that I test is GTA 5. In GTA 5, I used medium and few high graphic settings and full display resolution. And in this game, the frame rate is between 30 and 40. I know that this isn't much, but the game is fully playable. The other game that I test is Shadows of the Tomb Raider. Here I go with mixed settings also, I mean medium to high, and I used a full display resolution. And under the settings the frame rate is between 20 and 40. But if I go with the lower settings then the game is running much better. But however, I go with the higher settings because I want to see how this laptop is performing. The last game that I test is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. In Witcher, mostly I use the low settings and HD resolution, and under the settings, the frame rate is about a 30. Well, and this is all about this Dell m 6600 and I'm very glad because this laptop is working again. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some touch in function again. Also, if you want to support my channel and my work, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.